السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today إن شاء الله we will talk about أسماء بنت يزيد رضي الله عنها and أسيد بن الحضير رضي الله عنه So we, we all know that uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, migrated to Medina and Medina uh, got blessed with the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, uh, on this, this land. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after settling down, he started the basis for the uh, 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 for the Islam government for the Muslim government and the uh, helpers came to give pledge to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we know that what they did for the immigrants and how they um, uh, helped the immigrants and how they uh, sacrificed for the uh, for the immigrants and how they shared their stuff with the immigrants so among among these uh, people who co- who came to give pledge to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a woman, a woman who was very strong character. She has a a way of an impressive way to to talk, an impressive way to express herself. Uh, she she came truthfully, honestly, to give the pledge to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was a unique woman of Al-Ansar. And her name was Asma bintu Yazid. Asma bintu Yazid ibn al-Sakan ibn Rafi' ibn Imri al-Qaysi al-Awsiyya. So she was of the Aws tribe. So when she came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she she had all the gold in her hand and big, big bracelets, big bangles of gold in her hand. And Asma says, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at her hands and he said, put these, these bangles away, Asma. Aren't you afraid that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give you a bangle of, of, uh, of fire? Don't misunderstood the hadith. Having gold bangles is never haram or is never unlawful, but showing off is haram. Making uh, making it just apparent to let people see, oh, look who I am. Look at my rank. Look how noble I am. Look how rich I am. This is not acceptable in Islam. It is good to have dunya in our pockets, but not in our head, in our hearts. Never show off your dunya to people. Even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Duha, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ Talk about what you have. Talk about the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But be careful how to talk. Be careful not to break the hearts of the poor when you talk about your, the luxury life you are living. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what what he has given you. And apply the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to your wealth. And you will do that 
through giving charities, through, through giving sadaqah, through giving zakah. So apply the rules of wealth. Apply the rules of zakah. Apply the rules of sadaqah to your own money and to your own wealth. So who was this unique, unique uh, Muslim woman? She, she was, as I just mentioned, a very strong, she had a very strong character and she was so eloquent. So she was always of the people who would rush to do good, who would rush to help people. So she directed her attention to seeking knowledge and to, ha to, to have knowledge of this new dean until that was her big concern. She would hear the narration from Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the words of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with full alert alertness and she would ask questions she would ask about the minute the very minute matters if she doesn't understand it and she would ask all types of questions with with adab and she would ask uh, once she asked Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the rules of menstruation and she learned it uh, very solidly and she she taught all muslim ladies all muslim sisters so she was very wise and she always wanted to to uh, learn more and more and more one time she came to sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and she told him ya rasulullah إني رسول من ورائي إني رسول من ورائي من جماعة نساء المسلمين I am the ambassador of a group of women كلهن يقولن بقولي All of them say what I am going to say وهن على مثل رأيي And they have the same opinion So what was, what was it that they all gathered to, to ask Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? She said, إن الله بعثك إلى الرجال والنساء فآمنا بك واتبعناك. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has sent you as a messenger both to men and women. We believed in you and we followed you. ونحن معاشر النساء مقصورات مخدرات. قواعد بيوت. We, the women, are always at home taking care of our homes and doing our duties to our homes. وَإِنَّ الرِّجَالَ فُضِّلُوا بِالْجُمُعَاتِ وَشُهُودَ الْجَنَائِزِ وَالْجِهَادِ But men, men are uh, given more because they witness the Jum'a prayers, they witness, they follow the janaza, they participate in, for, uh, in battles for the sake of Allah. وَإِذَا خَرَجُوا لِلْجِهَادِ حَفِظْنَا لَهُمْ أَمْوَالَهُمْ And when they go out, to, when they participate in battles, we would save their houses, we would save their money, we would وَرَبَّيْنَا أَوْلَادَهُمْ And we are raising their children. We are taking care of the, of the children. We are taking care of the house. We are taking care of the children. Do we have the same uh, reward, Ya Rasulullah? She is worried. And all the women at that time were open-minded. We want to have, we want, they, they, they were seeking the Akhirah the same way the men are seeking the Akhirah. They know that the men, if they are killed in the day uh, in the battle, they are murderers. So what is what is their reward? They are staying at home. So she, radiallahu anha, asma, 
was looking for the, the, the doors of goodness. She was do, looking for the ways that she and all the women can get those good deeds. Because they saw that all these doors were open to men and not to women. And that's why she went to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she wanted to know what is their share of this reward. Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at her and he was, he was impressed by this uh, um, polite, this amazing uh, woman who was saying her words in a firm way uh, very eloquently and very truthfully. So he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was so happy that she was one, she and the woman were looking not only for dunya. They were looking for akhirah also. They were looking for the reward that would get them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he looked at his companions and he said, هل سمعتم مقالة امرأة أحسن سؤالا عن دينها من هذه? Have you ever heard a question from a woman that is better th uh, than this question? Or that was said in a better eloquent way than this question, than this woman, how she said it? They said, لا يا رسول الله. He said, no, يا رسول الله. So he looked at Asma and he said, انصرفي يا أسماء أو أسماء go وأعلمي من وراءك من النساء and teach those women who you are representing teach them that حسن تبعل إحدى كن لزوجها when you are good to your husbands when you fulfill your duties towards your husbands and when you seek his content and when you make everything easy for him, when you facilitate things for him, for the sake of Allah, and when, when you uh, uh, help him, when you do good things for him, when you accept what he is doing, when you support him with what you're doing, يعدل كل ما ذكرت للرجال equals all that you mentioned of the reward that was assigned to men. How, how great is this religion? Now, let's go back and talk about a few, a few points here. Today, if you ask uh, any woman, what is, uh, what is it, what, what do you do? They, they the, the answer would be in several groups. One, one woman would say, oh, I am a lawyer. I am a doctor. I am a teacher. I am so-and-so. And, -so. and the, the, uh, another important answer would be, I am a housewife. And this answer might be said in two different ways. Passionately, I am a housewife. Or sa with sadness, I am a housewife. So the first, the first answer would would show you how uh, this woman loves her position, her work. She is supposed, she knows that she is supposed to provide kindness, love, gentleness, wisdom uh, to teach her kids. And she is happy fulfilling this duty. While the other one would think, oh, Women are not equal to men. Women are supposed to stay home. Women are uh, this and that. Women are, she's not supposed with her role in her, in this life. Even though 
the role of a woman to raise her children, to take care of her children, to take care of her house, to keep her uh, everything around her uh, clean. And uh, uh, her house is, is filled with angels because she is doing all her best. And we all know that clean houses are uh, attract angels. You sometimes you would go to you would go to a, a house, and you would feel you have tranquility. You look around you. It doesn't need to be so well highly priced furniture. No, it's a simple house, but you feel there is something. There is some. Uh, uh, something that attracts your heart to this house. It doesn't have the dunya that make, gives you barriers between you and Allah. Yes, it has furniture, but it's simple furniture. It is what, what we need. It's like the house of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imagine what was the house of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A mattress to sleep on, and imagine what type of mattress was uh, it was. Once they changed his uh, 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 his uh, place where he sleeps, and they put something something that's more comfortable. He woke up the next day. He said, "What did you do? I don't want this luxury. It might make me miss if I sleep comfortably. I might miss my." The Hajjod, my night prayers. Simple house. So when, when a woman knows that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَقَدَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا your Lord decreed that you do not worship except him and to parents good treatment. This is a type of a reward that Allah has ordered the kids to treat their parents well in the very highest manner. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in one of the narrations said, Al-Jannatu tahta aqdami al-ummahat, paradise lies under the, heart, the feet of, of, of mothers. It's not physically, but when a mother fulfills her duties towards her, her, her husband, her, her children, her house, her everything, then she deserves paradise. These are all promises that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised. So this is one of the points. The other point is that in one of the uh, uh, lines of poetry, the poet says, Al-Ummu madrasatun iza a'adattaha, a'adatta sha'ban tayyib al-ahraqi. A woman is like a school. If this, if, if, if the woman is well taken care of, well raised, she, will, she in turn will raise a great generation. So some women might say, oh, but, but why would the men be, why should we listen to our men? Why should we follow our men? We have rights. We ha of course you have rights. But you have to know how to apply your rights, how to ask for your rights. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about qawama, talked about uh, the, the, the men being in charge, he does not mean that women, that women are lower or that they have less rights. No. Qawama means as stated by Allah, as indicated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says, that men are responsible for what they say, what they spend. 
they are responsible for because of what they provide. They have to provide for the family. So in Islam, normally the husband is the leader. It doesn't mean that he oppresses, that he, he is a tyrant. No, he and the, the man and the woman share responsibilities. Their aim is to raise a good generation. So every type of a group, including the family, must have a leader to guide it. And in Islam, normally the man is that leader because of his responsibility that he has to provide for the, for the family. The woman can sit like a queen in her house, not worrying about getting any money. She is the queen who is served by the husband to provide for her. But when, when we talk about things, we have to talk about them the Islamic way, not the Western way, how, how the, uh, the Western way corrupted the mind, the mind of the woman. So the Western society has completely stripped women of their norm, uh, morality and chastity. They wanted them to be equal to men. They wanted them to do whatever they can so they can be dependent. Uh, they, 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 they are not dependent on anyone. But we as Muslim women, we want to be like those Muslim Sahaba, Sahabiyat, Muslim companions of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We want to spread Islam. We have to show people that the woman in Islam is a valuable creature. She is honored by Islam. The woman is considered half of the society. And in reality, she serves, uh, she, she, she saves the whole society when she follows the right path. And when she raises the, uh, a new generation who follow the right path. So this was, um, uh, this was Asma. Asma understood who is the woman in Islam? So later on, uh, 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 years passed and Asma still learning and teaching, learning and teaching. And we have to know that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam urges, urges learning and teaching. And especially Quran, he says, من تعلم القرآن وعلمه. The best of you is that person who learns the Quran and who teaches it. And he says, بلغوا عني ولو آية. Tell people, uh, invite people with even one ayah. Learn and teach. But was this all for Asma, that she wanted just to learn and to teach? No, she was courageous, daring. She was so brave that she participated in jihad also. At the time of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, she did not participate in battles. But after, she participated in Al-Yarmouk, and we uh, al yarmouk battle and we all know that this uh, battle was one of the greatest battles uh, 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 that was against the byzantines uh, to conquer sham so asma went with the army uh, that was under uh, khalid ibn al walid and khalid knew that uh, the the battle will be so so severe so fierce so he uh, uh, he asked uh, the the uh, woman to be with them so they would uh, uh, hand the uh, weapons they would uh, uh, um, uh, give water to the to the to the, uh, to the soldiers they would uh, uh, um, bandage the wounds of the uh, uh, soldiers and that was not the only thing that 
as man was looking for. It is said that she took the tent pole and she killed nine of the Byzantines in that battle. And she was wounded heavily in that battle. But she was so happy that she was, she, she had a greatness, coolness of an eye. And she was so happy that Allah gave victory to the army of Muslims. So she lived after that uh, long, long years for a long time. And the uh, uh, people, uh, uh, the, the uh, companions and those who came after, uh, they, they used to uh, come to her to ask her uh, about the narrations of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she narrated more than 80 hadith from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this was Asma radiallahu anha. And uh, she, she died in the year 30 uh, of Hijrah. And she was buried in Damascus. So this was the leader of women. And this was the woman who wanted to learn and who wanted to teach the women at her time. We move on now to Sayyidina Usaid ibn Hudayr. And uh, Sayyidina Usaid is uh, the wisest was what is a name of one of the wisest people and honorable leaders in uh, uh, Medina. So he was uh, the son of the leader of Al Aws, and his name was Hudayr al Kataib. And he inherited, Usaid inherited his leadership position uh, from his father. So his father was uh, a noble uh, leader, an honorable leader, and Usaid took this after his father. Uh, Usaid was uh, a fierce fighter and, one, uh, uh, and he uh, excelled at swimming and uh, archery. And he was, he was uh, uh, given the title of the uh, perfect, perfect one. And that was before, uh, uh, before being a Muslim. And that was in the pre-Islamic time. But there is a saying that, uh, الناس كالمعادن خيارهم في الجاهلية خيارهم في الإسلام إذا فقهوا. So there is a saying that uh, the best of the men in the pre-Islamic time is the best of them in Islam if they uh, they apply Islam fully. So as as uh, uh, Usaid was uh, 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 an honorable person in uh, in Jahiliya, he was also the uh, the bright-minded person who was well known for uh, supporting his. Uh, the religion of his fathers and his forefathers. So what happened, one time, he was sitting with uh, uh, his friend and uh, they knew that uh, Musab ibn Umair was one of the leaders and uh, he was uh, one of the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was uh, given, he was in one of the orchards and he was given, uh, giving a uh, talking to the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
So uh, he was teaching them. He was teaching them about uh, Islam and uh, about uh, uh, Quran and about everything. So uh, with him was his friend, companion, Asad ibn Zurara. He was, Asad was one of the leaders of Medina who, were, who became Muslims at the very beginning time of Islam. So uh, what happened? Asad was with Musab radiallahu an, and Musab was uh, reciting, was reciting the uh, uh, Quran to the people. And whenever he has a group whom he was reciting Quran to, the hearts of those people who are listening softens and everyone who comes to this, to any of his gatherings, everyone would not leave until they became a Muslim. So this was the, uh, the virtue of Sayyidina Musab that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. So he was, uh, he was reciting and he had uh, a group of people reci uh, uh, who were not non-Muslims and they recite, he recited for them and they all turned to Islam. So what happened, uh, someone came to Usaid ibn Hudayr and Sa'd ibn Mu'az and they told them, of course, they were not Muslims yet. And being the uh, leaders of their tribes, so, so someone came to them and he told them that As'ad, As'ad ibn Zurara, who is uh, the, the friend of Musab ibn Umair, uh, he said, uh, so someone came to Usaid and Sa'ad and told them that As'ad ibn Zurara is protecting this man, this young man who is Musab, and things are, uh, people are following them, and they, they have come closer to our tribe. So Sa'ad ibn Mu'az became very upset, and he looked at Usaid, and he said, how, how come that till now you haven't gone to, this, to these two people and to talk to them, to ask them not to do this anymore? So not to get closer to our tribe. But Usaid said, I would have done it, but I cannot. You know, Asad is my cousin and I cannot, I cannot talk to him. So Usaid said, okay, I'm going to take, oh, I'm going to do it. I am the man for this. So he took his uh, spear and he went heading towards uh, Musab and those people who are with him. So when, uh, Sa when Asad saw, saw him, he looked at Musab and he, he whispered to him, this is the leader of his tribe. So he came to you, be truthful, have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and talk to him from, from, talk to him. So Usaid stood very angry uh, in front of everybody. And he was, he was uh, talking uh, uh, badly to, uh, to Mus'ab. And he said, why, why have you come here? So you, you want our weak people to follow you. Well, we, you want our slaves to be against us. Why, why have you come here? Just leave us, leave us alone. So Musab was had had so much tranquility, and he said he talked uh, the way of uh, um, uh, the uh, the one who has very who is very confident of Allah's promises always. So he looked at uh, Usaid and he said, "How about if you sit down and listen? If you find something good." you would accept it. And if you find something not good, or if you hate what I'm going to say, we, are, we, we can leave and we will not talk to you. Uh, we will not, 
we, we will be away from your tribe. So Said look at, looked at him and he said, uh, and we, we all, we just started by saying he was a wise person. So he said to him, fair enough. He put his spear down on the ground and he, and he sat. And Mus'ab radiallahu anhu um, called him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and read the Quran. And when he, when he read the Quran, his heart was moved. Uh, so Usaid, Usaid was moved by what he heard from Mus'ab. And he felt there's something, something amazing. And he felt that with his heart. So he, he liked what he said, what he heard. And he said, how good is what you are saying? How good is this? So he inquired how to join the new religion. So both Mus'hab and Asad said to him, uh, you just wash, you wash your clothes, you pur purify yourself, and you you just witness the uh, that there is no God except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and uh, his messenger is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that was it. Just one meeting with the truthful people, with the truthful companions who were spreading the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what do you think of this? So what, whatever comes out of the heart will immediately get into the heart. What comes out of a heart is nothing but an arrow that would hit the heart of the one who is listening with his heart. Sometimes you go to a meeting, so many people are there, some of them are affected, some of them are not. Some of them are touched, some of them are not. So listen, whenever you are in a gathering, just get the, the ears of your heart open. Listen with your heart, not only with your ears. When you, when you open your heart to, to, uh, to, and, and allow it to listen to the light that comes out of other people, then this light would get into your heart. So with this, uh, uh, Usaid accepted Islam and being a balanced, a wise person, he would not accept to choose just a few uh, pieces of wood or some stone to worship and to leave Islam away behind. So, Usaid became a Muslim and he went back to Sa'd, Sa'd ibn Mu'az. He went to his friend. As soon as he was getting closer, Sa'd said, أحلف بالله لقد جاءكم أسيد بغير الوجه الذي ذهب به من عندكم. I swear, God, that Usaid has come with a different face that he left with. So the light of the heart is reflected on the face. Sometimes you, you see some people and you say, oh, mashallah, there is light in the, in, the, uh, in the face of this person. And this, this, just these words would give you an idea about the heart of that person. So the light of Iman, the light of faith in the heart is reflected on the face. So since that day, Usaid was so impressed with Quran. And he, he would spend his time just reciting Quran and teaching Quran. So when it was, it would, uh, when night falls down, he would sit uh, by himself and he would start reading 
the Quran and he would start reading as much as he can to recite of the Quran. People are asleep, but he is with his, with what, what gives light to his heart. He is reciting the Holy Quran. And not only the people of, uh, of, of this earth liked his uh, recitation, also the angels of the sky liked his recitation. And he mentions, he narrates one time that it was uh, uh, a night, uh, everyone was uh, in his home and Usaid was in his home with his younger uh, son Yahya, he was, his, his son was sleeping uh, with, uh, next to him and his horse was uh, out, out of the house and uh, he was re reciting the uh, ayahs of the Quran. He started with Surah Al-Baqarah and suddenly the, the horse uh, was well, felt something different and it was uh, uh, kneeling and uh, uh, there was there was something not normal. So Usaid got scared and he stopped for a second. So the, the horse calmed down. When Usaid uh, rec uh, recited again, the same thing happened to the to the horse. So he he stopped. He didn't want his son to wake up, and the the horse uh, calmed down. He he went out and he saw a huge, big, big cloud in the sky. That he said, I never saw a more beautiful cloud than this one. As if it has uh, uh, lanterns. So the night was full of light. It was, it was very uh, uh, astonishing for uh, Usaid. Didn't know what happened. And when it was the morning, he went to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he told him what happened. Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, said to him, those were the angels. They came down because they, they heard you recite beautifully. And his recitation was so beautiful. So if you, if you kept reciting, people would have waken up to see angels also. So that was uh, his relationship with the Quran and Usaid. Usaid always said, I wish I am uh, always the same way I am on three positions. He felt his soul was transparent, his transparent spirit. So those, those uh, uh, times when, when I listen to Quran or re recite Quran, he feels something special. Or when I listen to a ceremony by Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or when I follow a janazah. These were the three times that his heart was affected the most. And he wishes that he is always uh, having the same, uh, uh, the same reflection on his heart, the same way that he is during these three times. So Usaid at, uh, uh, witnessed the uh, battles with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam starting from Ghazwat Uhud and later and on. And uh, uh, in, uh, uh, he had different situations and uh, positions. So uh, the main concern, our main concern, our main thing that we learn from Sayyidina Usaid was his amazing relation with the Quran. So uh, Islam is a religion of faith. It's a religion of Iman and that is felt by the heart. It's also a religion of righteous deeds, the Al-A'mal Al-Saliha, and these are uh, obvious. These are 
uh, uh, both iman and uh, righteous deeds, so the faith and the righteous deeds, they are both guided by the, by the Quran, by the light of the Quran. So the words of Allah are the best way to communicate directly with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to develop a good relationship with the Quran. We have to develop, uh, uh, we have to have uh, a strong bond with the Quran. And this bond would last uh, forever. So start now uh, with strengthening this bond. Strength, start now with developing this bond with the Quran. It's the time now. Ramadan is a few a few days away, and the uh, we we all know that all deeds are multiplied. The reward of them are multiplied in Ramadan by ten to seven hundred folds. So read Quran, recite Quran during Ramadan, and uh, we know that some some people of Allah would. Uh, um, always, always spend the time in Ramadan reciting Quran. There are people who finish one khatam in Ramadan, people who can do two, people who can read the Quran three times, people who can recite the whole Quran in a week, others in three days. If you do 10, day, 10 juz every day, then you will finish in three days. But the some of the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said they finish a khatam, a whole recitation during the night and another one during the day. We want to have a strong relation, a strong bond with the Quran. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to help you, to make it easy to facilitate it for you, to be able to read the Quran, to be able to listen to the Quran during these blessed days. And something else, apply what you are reading, apply the rules of Allah. When, whenever you hear the words, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O people who have, who have uh, faith, then O people who believe, just listen to what is after. Because Allah is saying, do or don't do. So read the Quran, apply the eyes of the Quran, and always remember Sayyidina Usaid radiallahu anhu. So during the time, the Caliph uh, Umar, during the uh, time of Sayyidina Umar, uh, uh, Sayyidina Umar loved uh, Sayyidina Usaid, and he witnessed his uh, nobility and high position in, in society. And... Um, he was with him when uh, Sayyidina Umar conquered uh, Al-Quds, Jerusalem, and got the keys. So Sayyidina Usaid was with him. And a few years after that, uh, Usaid radiallahu an passed away. And it, that was uh, during the year 20th of Hijra. So Sayyidina Umar uh, uh, himself helps uh, carrying his body to be buried in Jannatul Baqir. These are the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So whenever you you visit uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and whenever you go to the uh, Al Masjid al Nabawi, just have a look on those people who are on those companions who are buried in Al Baqir, and give them them salam. And say, Assalamu alaikum dar qawmin mu'mineen, antum as-sabiqoon wa nahnu al-lahiqoon. Ya Allah, oh people, uh, send, uh, I'm sending salam to you. Uh, you, uh, you, you, uh, you died before us, but we are all going to die. And we, inshallah, are all going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will be pleased with us, and we will be play, we will be of the group whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them. Radiallahu anhum wa an. Allah is pleased with them, and they are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of what they found of our word that He had promised. And that is our session for today. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.